Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and today we're going to be looking at different ways on how to improve your overall UX UI design inside of Cursor. So I bet a lot of you have built, you know, some impressive apps or are trying to build some type of impressive app inside of Cursor, but you're not quite, you know, satisfied with the design that the AI provided you with, or you're just trying to, you know, try to figure out different types of design styles or design systems on how you can kind of improve your app's design inside of Cursor. Now, before we dive into this video, I would love to invite you guys to my Discord server where we have a bunch of different designers, developers, creators from all over, all over the world. And we basically get together every single weekday to kind of do live streams and talk about different topics, do live builds together and so on and so forth. And I'm basically present on all the calls. So if you wanna meet me, if you wanna ask some different questions or if you wanna you know, talk about different topics, feel free to join that. Link is down in the description below. Now let's say that we're already inside of Cursor. We have our project set up there. You know, you have different your different files and everything, and you have a specific uh, design that I can just basically open here. And it looks pretty nice, it looks pretty simple, but you kind of wanna improve this in a way, right? It's very bland in terms of color, right? There's not a lot of color. Um, you know, certain things look nice like the buttons, but it looks pretty generic, maybe a little bit um, too generic, right? Now what you can do here that works pretty well with simpler projects, but doesn't really work that efficiently with bigger projects is by looking at some type of Google image, right? In this case, I search for Neo Brutalism UI and we can just copy something like this. And inside of Cursor, you can just paste this as a reference and ask the AI to basically uh, convert the design into the style. So convert the design of my landing page to match the style of the reference image. You can just click on enter and we see our image over there if we, if we hover over that. So I'll help you convert your landing page to match the style shown in the reference image, which appears to be a neo-brutalism design with distinct characteristics like bold elements, high contrast and playful UI components. So that's another thing that I forgot to mention. Apart from, you know, writing down this, you can, you can basically be a little bit more specific as to what types of fonts you'd want to have. Maybe have something more of like a handwritten font or like a, you know, a sans serif font, very thick. Um, maybe you can even mention the, the size of the font for your header. You can give it a certain style, like over here we see playful, chunky UI elements. So if you can go as specific as possible, that would be great. And a great tool, obviously, to help you do that is ChatGPT, right? I, I would even suggest using this ChatGPT 4.5. Maybe if you're watching this uh, video in the future, it'll change a little bit as in, in terms of performance as this is all, you know, developing so quickly. But it would be best if you kind of ask ChatGPT, hey, like I want to build a prompt for Cursor. Can you help me refine this prompt and make it as specific as possible? But anyways, we accept these changes. And if I go back into my preview mode and basically we get something like this, which you can see that the UI has changed. It, we have this neo Brutalist style with these you know, buttons that kind of interact as well, but the actual context of our project changed, right? So it actually became like more in this type of style, right? So we don't really want that. So what we can do is we can go back into cursor and say, please maintain the neo brutalist style, but please keep the old layout and context of the older version. So that's kind of a really important thing just to realize that you want to be as specific as possible in that first prompt to really get the best results that you want. And so once we accept those changes, now we should start getting what we really wanted, which was this, right? We get our nice nav, nav bar, basically the same type of context that we had before, features, pricing, about, login, and we get all of this, right? Looking exactly how we want it. And it's basically the same type of layout, just with that type of neo uh, style that we wanted to implement that we found online. And another way of doing this, and by the way, shout out to AI Labs on YouTube for kind of explaining more about this. And this is like one way that I actually found pretty useful is using um, this prompt, right? Create a JSON profile design uh, system that extracts visual data from these screenshots. So I basically added this clay morphism type of style. So if you really scroll in, you can see that there's like these little inner shadows here, right? So it's called clay morphism. Um, I'm not a big fan, but just to kind of show you what, what this looks like so so that I can use the JSON output in cursor to give it context and how to replicate such design systems in a consistent style. Avoid including the contents of the specific images. The output should include the design style, the structure, and anything 
anything that'll help an AI replicate such design. So yeah, again, shout out to AI Labs, AI Labs for providing this. And what we're gonna do is just click on enter. So basically what we can do is just download this JSON once it's done, go back into cursor. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag and drop this JSON file that I downloaded. And as you can see over here, we get our clay design system UI. And I'm just gonna now prompt the AI to basically build or redesign our design based on this JSON file. So we can say, please re redesign the landing page based on the design from clay design system.json. So let's just click on that. So you can already start seeing, I'll incorporate the gradient based visual hierarchy, glass morphism elements, and the specified color palette and components. And then once we accept those changes, voila, right? We get this nice clay morphism. As you can see, there's like kind of like a drop shadow over here. We have a little bit of a gradient over here, right? We have these really nice buttons. And over here, we kind of get that same style that we get over here, right? So basically that is, you know, another way of doing it. And not only that, not only can you redesign the actual landing page, but you can create the other pages, right? Let's say that we want to create the pricing page or the or the about page. So we can say like, let's create an about page um, for our product. All right, and now once that's updated, we can basically just go here, click on the about tab at the top, and you can see that it creates this about section with that same type of design style that we, you know, asked it to create based on this clay morphism UI, right? So pretty impressive. And with this, you know, you can go ahead and create all the pages that you want to in this type of UI style. Now, another way of actually improving some of your design, I, would, I wouldn't say overall design system of your app, but just, you know, adding some extra touches, some cool little animations here and there is to use component libraries. Like for example, as Eternity UI, there's also 21st Dev, there's like React Bits, there's like Neo, Neo Brutalist UI, I think it's called, there's like a bunch of them. I would just search for like Shad CN UI component library or JavaScript component library or Framer Motion component library. Search those keywords on Google. But yeah, basically you can look for these things. You can kind of, this is 21st step, by the way, you can, you know, kind of hover over them. Some are very, you know, uh, interesting in terms of the design, in terms of like, maybe you can use it as a cool background effect or like a bento grid like over here so we can click on this for example and you can see that we have this this really nice bento grid and let's just say that we want to add it underneath our hero section and we can just copy this prompt right and we can go to back into cursor and say please please uh, add the following component in the hero section or under the hero section. And we can just say like, make sure that it's in the same type of UI design system that I mentioned earlier. Then we can just click on submit. And now it's basically gonna create the Bento Grid component with the FinTech mobile UI design system styling. Let's click on accept over here. Uh, create the demo component with FinTech theme content and unsplash images. So it's gonna go step by step here. And now it's gonna integrate it inside of the page. So I actually have the preview open over here while this code gets generated. And now if I scroll down, you can see that we have our bento grid in this nice style. I can even hover over things and we see this nice little animation. Again, now something that's interesting is that we have the space and that's basically something that you have to kind of prompt to the AI. And we have this like little uh, like placeholder over, here, placeholder over here of this unsplash images looking very funny, but yeah, basically this is kind of like the next step. And another way of kind of enhancing your design here is you can actually take a, an entire screenshot of this, right? With this go full page Chrome extension, you can download this and then you can go into a tool called Magic Path, which by the way is like this really great AI design tool with an infin infinite canvas, right? As you can see, I'm just moving things around and I can copy things, duplicate things, and just build it off like that. And basically what I can do is just click on this image upload button, click on the screen capture, click on open. And then before we start designing, we can ask Magic Path to kind of describe what we're seeing, right? And once it describes it, it says, it's a clean modern SaaS landing page with a purple accent featuring a hero section, feature highlights, and a simple footer. 
The layout is spacious with card-based feature descriptions and a clear call to action buttons. And now what you can do is you can create like different variants based on like different keywords or other types of images that you want to kind of add to this. In this case, I want to make it like a dark mode. So I can say create a dark mode version of this, but keep the context, right? And we basically get a dark mode version of our app or our landing page in this case. And it's also completely responsive, right? So if I were to just minimize the size like this, you can just scroll down and kind of see that it also works for the phone version. Now, what's also amazing here is that you can just copy, paste this. And what you can also do is just copy this frame and paste it and it pastes right next to it. And then you can just make changes. Like you can just kind of like select something and say, let's turn this red, right? We don't want to do that, but I'm just kind of showing you what you can do here. And then you can also create different variants, right? So you can make them, like, let's say, create a, an award winning design create an award-winning win website design, right? We click on enter and we basically get three different variants, right? We can kind of zoom into one of these and again, all of them responsive. We can scroll down. We see different types of fade out, fade in animations. Also like these kind of uh, pop-ups that happen with the, with the icons once they're in a specific scroll position. We have these different testimonial cards, a CTA section and the footer. And you can basically go on and on creating different variants and kind of refining your different variants with the AI. And with the free version of Magic Path, you can do like five uh, prompts per day, which is pretty useful. And then once you're done, you can go over here, you can see the preview in a new tab, or you can go to this code icon. You can open it directly inside of Cursor if you wanna start off with a new project, which is pretty cool, right? Or you can download it as a code base. So I can just go like this. And then basically we can just up upload this uh, folder inside of our existing project. And we could say like, we can say like design our landing page to match the overall design from this folder, Magic Path Project 3, right? Click on submit. And now look how crazy this is, right? We basically did this, our new hero section in kind of the same style as what we created in Magic Path, right? We have these little dots at the, at the, at the back kind of floating around. We can change those colors if we wanted to. And we basically have um, all of these sections in this new type of design style. And um, the bento grid is still there, but basically um, that would also have to be kind of adapted. Let's see if we can do that. So yeah, adapt the design of the bento grid to match the overall design that was just implemented. And now we go back and we have a very nice bento grid over here, right? With this nice little purple glow and the button with this nice little glow to it. You know, we saw a few different interesting ways of how to improve your overall design in an existing cursor file. And we looked at different things. We looked at, you know, curse, uh, cursor, obviously designing inside of cursor, designing with the help of Claude, designing with the help of different component libraries and designing with the help of Magic Path, which by the way, if you're starting off in cursor, you don't even have a project yet. You can start the design process inside of Magic Path and then bring that into cursor and then you know, keep on moving forward like that. And it's also cool to kind of combine all of these different strategies uh, because you, you know, at the end of the day, it's like vibe coding. So you're just vibing around and just trying to get the best results for yourself and you, and, and most importantly, uh, have fun. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.